नमस्कार दिस इज अ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन साइबर सिक्योरिटी अवेयरनेस बाय आईटी डिपार्टमेंट एट इंश्योरेंस रेगुलेटरी एंड डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया आई द इंटरनेट टुडे टचेज एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ अवर डेली लाइफ एंड बाई स्पेंडिंग मोर टाइम ऑनलाइन द पब्लिक ऑफ द कंट्री एंड द वर्ल्ड आर ऑल्सो एक्सपोजिंग दमसेल्स to cyber threats and the vulnerabilities present in technology and the internet cyber crimes are on the rise including data breaches online scams fraud identity and intellectual property theft network intrusions and a range of financial crimes from fraud to embezzlement as these emerging online risks threaten our digital lives including our homes workplaces etc it is critical that everyone makes cyber security a priority cyber security is the responsibility of each one of us and even small actions can make a huge difference in keeping the internet and ourselves cyber safe please note that this presentation is strictly intended for providing only general awareness and information on cyber security the viewers are strongly advised to read carefully and be aware of the information and cyber security provisions of any insurance product and insurance entity in the current pandemic situation where work from home is a reality for most and digital services are on the rise so are the cyber attacks cyber security has become more important than ever in today's digital life it is no more a matter for only security experts to take care of because hackers and cyber attackers no more target only companies and corporations but individuals too cyber security is now a part of every individual's life the more connected we get safeguarding our digital identities becomes a shared responsibility the more we share the more we must care it is a collective responsibility of the government organizations regulators employees policy holders and citizens at large to take security as a priority and stay cyber safe digital means of insurance is also on the rise including buying renewing servicing and claims of the policy with the ease and convenience that these digital means offer they also bring the challenges and exposure to cyber risks so how to start to make ourselves cyber safe creating strong passwords and using multi factor authentication backing up of your data and updating your softwares are great places to start and this is a great way to start doing your part to be cyber smart it is said that a majority of cyber attacks are a result of stolen weak or easy to guess passwords it is important to note that your password is what makes you accountable for the actions taken under your account if a person were trying to guess your password they might try 10 or a few more passwords per minute if they are fast but a computer can guess much much faster so how many permutations does it take to get your password it depends on how strong your password is secondly some services require regular password changes while some do not if they don't it is always a good plan to change your password regularly anyways thirdly once a password is compromised it can be exploited at any point in time even years later reusing a password reopens the vulnerability window for that password so this is a sample checklist for password security it in no way is the only way that a secure password can be set but it is one of the examples of how to set a relatively stronger password first thing first never share your password with anyone then create a strong impersonal and long password 
comprising of at least 12 characters, random capital letters, lowercase and at least one uppercase, and also symbols and alphanumerics. Thirdly, it is very important to change the password and to ensure that it is it might be helpful to set a reminder to change the password at a particular frequency depending on criticality of the service or application. Then never reuse your passwords. Also do not use the default passwords which are given by the application or the services and change the password immediately. Different sites then different passwords. So one of the ways to set different passwords for different sites while also making it convenient to remember those passwords is an example in the last line of this slide. For example, the first eight characters could be your own password. This could be the base of the password followed by the name of the application. So for different sites, the base of the password remains the same while only the app name, application name changes. So it also makes it relatively easier to remember the password while only changing the name of the application and also ensuring that there are different passwords for different sites. Phishing is a type of fraud in which a hacker attempts to gather personal information or credentials by impersonating a legitimate brand and sending users to a malicious website. It tricks the recipient to click the link or attachment in the email or message. Phishing attacks and scams have thrived since the COVID-19 began in 2020 and today phishing attacks account for more than 80% of reported security incidents. In fact, phishing is also called a pandemic in the cyber world. So now the question is how to spot phishing? So, an attempt of phishing through email or message is likely to contain few clues and identifiers which may help us separate out such emails and be aware of them. Number one clue, there is likely to be an unfamiliar or illegitimate address of the sender. So therefore, turning a critical eye on the sender's address can help you identify the first sign of a phishing email. So do watch out for red flags in the email address such as an illegitimate or unfamiliar domain. Number two, there are chances of a sense of urgency in such phishing emails. It is likely that their subject lines would be a bit more specific. Therefore, it is in your best interest to be suspicious of any email that uses red alert terms or encourages you to feel rushed. Number three, there is likely to be a generic greeting or salutation in such emails. For example, things like dear valued customer, dear user, these may seem very sincere in such emails, but in most cases, a non-personalized greeting is a sign of trouble. Number four, they are likely to be spelling and grammatical mistakes in such emails. Number five, there are chances that there could be suspicious links present in such emails. Number six, there would be suspicious attachments likely in such emails. Therefore, before you download or open that attachment, check out for a few red flags. For example, unless you have specifically requested someone to send you an executable file for whatever reason, steer clear of any file attachment ending in .exe. However, you should also know that malicious files come in all shapes and sizes. These are the few clues and identifiers which can help us identify an attempt of phishing through emails or messages. What are the best practices and do's while buying or renewing insurance policy? For policyholders and customers, it is important to keep cybersecurity at the forefront. Before purchasing any online insurance product, do your research properly. When you set up a new device or app, consider your security and privacy settings 
and do update the default passwords given. Please remember, cybersecurity should not be an afterthought. Also, look for credibility of sellers, agents, brokers, or insurance company staff. Some of the sources to check for such credibility are IRDAI website, which is available in both English and Hindi. It has the following information for authorized insurance entities. It has a list of insurance companies, web aggregators, brokers, IMFs. It also has a list of individual insurance agents whose credibility can be checked. It has a list of corporate agents as well. Other best practices are that do provide personal and KYC information only when asked and only on need to know basis. Then do obtain authorized receipt for every payment made for buying or renewing insurance policy. Do inform about any changes in contact details address to the insurance company from time to time. And wherever possible for insurance policy, do use e-insurance account. What are some of the don'ts while buying or renewing insurance policy? Firstly, do not share any PIN or account password while contacting customer care. Do not share any OTP unless very sure and certain of its use. Avoid insurance related website which are not starting with HTTPS. Avoid sellers or intermediaries with suspicious and spurious identity. Beware of the insurance intermediaries asking for sensitive or personal information. What are some of the best practices for cyber safety during claim process of insurance? Do follow due procedure for claim as prescribed by the insurance company. Provide authentic claim related information and personal or sensitive information only to the authorized personnel and only when necessary in the claim process. Provide account information only to the insurance company's staff or claim team upon satisfaction of their authenticity. Do keep records of the transaction's important information such as transaction ID. Do not provide account passwords to anyone. It is very important to follow cyber ethics and be a responsible cyber policy holder. Some of the ways to do that are to not engage in any inappropriate cyber conduct, for example, cyber bullying. Do not impersonate anyone, example, by creating fake social pages, posts, sites, etc. While downloading insurance related or any other information from internet, copyright constraints must be adhered to. The antivirus must be updated to the latest virus definitions. Do not use others' information which may help or lead to identifying them. Avoid storing or printing documents which may be having sensitive information at home. It is very important to beware of clicking anywhere on the internet, that is, to stay click aware. And also, do lock the screen before stepping away from the device or system. With the prevalent use of mobile devices for insurance and other financial services, it becomes all the more crucial to maintain cyber hygiene for mobile devices as well. It is recommended that Bluetooth auto discovery may be disabled for mobile devices. It is recommended that auto connect for public Wi-Fi may be turned off and public Wi-Fi must be used with extreme care and caution. Latest and tested updates for applications and operating systems should be installed in the mobile devices. And also, there is a large cyber risk in mobile devices for phishing through SMS, which is called smishing. It may contain some suspicious links which may lead a user and tempt the user to click on those links or attachments and lead to malicious websites. Therefore, one must be very, very aware of the text messages being received. And lastly, what are the avenues to report cyber incident related to insurance and others? Firstly, 
when it comes to insurance related cyber attacks or incidents it can be reported to the concerned insurance companies even said alternatively the reporting can also be done at iidai's grievance portal that is igms integrated grievance management system thirdly there is a helpline with the number 155260 it's a national helpline and reporting platform by ministry of home affairs this helpline helps in preventing financial loss it is operated by the concerned state police and it uses latest technologies to take action against digital fraud in real time it is also integrated with law enforcement agencies and financial intermediaries additionally there is another portal for digital police which is a platform for citizens to file crime related complaints online and seek antecedent verification of prospective employees such as domestic help drivers etc or tenants or for any other purpose so beware of cyber security challenges in day to day life follow cyber hygiene and ethics do your part and be cyber smart thank you